Hey guys, and thank you so much for watching my part two of top 10 movies of 2021. But this time, we're not talking about the best. We're talking about the most disappointing movies. Reality is often disappointing. Obviously, the title says top 10 worst, but in all actuality, this is more so of a disappointing list. Like these were films that I was either really looking forward to or I was somewhat looking forward to. But before I get into my top 10, here are a couple of dishonorable mentions. Jungle Cruise, starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson and Emily Blunt. That movie had some interesting ideas, not so great executions, and it's one of those films that I will watch once and I will never watch again. Thank you so much, The Rock. I love you. I didn't love that movie. Another dishonorable mention, is Without Remorse, starring Michael B. Jordan. It was a Amazon original film. I believe it was supposed to come out in theaters and then they just put it on streaming. If that's not the case, it should be because this movie was super forgettable. I was really looking forward to like a Jack Ryan, you know, espionage kind of feel action thriller with Michael B. Jordan at the center of it and it sounded amazing. Great premise, loses his wife and he's going for revenge. What could go wrong? A terrible script, a predictable one at that, and really lame, lame characters. Forgettable characters and forgettable writing. Some interesting set pieces, but other than that, I did not remember the movie a day after it came out. So, those are my dishonorable mentions. So, on to the top 10, and starting with number 10 is... Venom, Let There Be Carnage. My score has actually dropped dramatically for this film. I think it was like a six and a half in my last review. It's like a five now. Um, I would rather rewatch Venom 2 than Venom 1 because it's 85 minutes, very fast paced, but Venom 1 was a better film. And it's kind of weird because if you look at the Rotten Tomatoes scores, you'd think I'd be talking crazy, but no, 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 I'm not lying. Venom is a better made film than Venom Let There Be Carnage. I personally was just let down with a lot of story beats and I really did not like how the trailers made it seem like, yes, there was gonna be some funny moments between Venom and Eddie, but they really ran with it in the sequel. Like it's more of definitely that rom-com bromance buddy cop feel movie with Eddie and Venom. And then Carnage is Carnage-ish but not really, and that was another letdown, because I love Woody Harrelson, and I thought he would be perfect, but I felt like the script didn't do him justice. Carnage still looked great. He looked amazing. Didn't really like the voice, but even though it had some interesting action sequences, some really cool moments, some funny moments, but overall, I didn't enjoy the comedy, bromance, buddy cop film attempt that they were trying to go for. Love you, Andy Serkis, but... I wasn't for this movie. Number nine, Black Widow. This movie also dropped dramatically lower. Probably yet again, another five. Um, and I think it was like actually a 6.5 yet again. I, I just didn't like this film. I felt like it was more of Yelena's film. And yes, it's a passing of the baton film because she's gonna become the next Black Widow. I just really thought this is your attempt for a Black Widow origin film, or not origin film, but her first movie, this is it and she's not even really, truly, the full central character. Like, literally the mission isn't even for her. She just gets roped into it. It's Yelena's mission, which later becomes hers near the third act, but if you have to do that with your main character, something's wrong with your script. Number eight is technically three films, but I grouped it into one because I was really disappointed with this trilogy that was on Netflix, which is the Fear Street trilogy. I kind of enjoyed the first one. I really liked the second one. And the third one was very, very disappointing. Overall, it left a very sour taste in my mouth. I was really looking forward to how everything was concluding because it's set in three different um, centuries. Um, well, no, three different decades. Um, you get this time span of the 90s, the 70s, I believe, and then you get the 1600s. Like, talk about a dramatic shift. But overall, it just left a sour taste in my mouth by the end of what they were trying to do, and I don't recommend watching it. 
Number seven is Spiral. Um, basically, just a very poor attempt of doing a Saw film with Chris Rock being Chris Rock as a cop who is going against this new jigsaw type um, serial killer. And it was a respected attempt. You know, I think Chris Rock even produced this. He had an idea and he, you know, went for it. And I give props to that because it's hard to make a film. But it just didn't really work for me. I, I felt like there was too many inconsistencies with the plot. Chris Rock really didn't feel right for this film, personally. It, it, it just kind of took me out of the movie whenever he was doing a scene. And I still respect him for, for trying it, but... It didn't work out at the end for this movie. And number six is Snake Eyes. This movie actually would have been good if it wasn't about Snake Eyes. That's it. Now starting with the top five. Chaos Walking. Wow. That was a really forgettable film. <laughs> Starring Daisy Ridley, Tom Holland, Mads Mickelson, and you give me that? <sighs> Number four, Tom and Jerry, I hate this movie. Let's move on. Now we are in the top three most disappointing movies of 2021. And what is my number three? Well, we had a great year of musicals, right? We had Tick, Tick, Boom, In the Heights. So many great additions to love West Side Story. And we got Dear Evan Hansen. <laughs> wow, this movie was a trip. I wanted to fall asleep throughout majority of it. Um, I understood. I understood what Ben Platt was trying to do, but he should not have been cast. He he should not have been cast in this film. He looks like a thirty five year old predator in this film. Like, let's be honest. And the musical numbers are good, but the way they do it in this film isn't good at all. I just don't know what happened when it came to the disconnect between the play and this movie. Maybe there will be a better version later in the future. Probably won't. But this was not it. Number two, Space Jam. Yeah, I watched this on HBO Max because I did not want to support this film. LeBron James, he's a great basketball player. Acting wise, he was good in Trainwreck. Not in this movie. And guys, here we are, my number one most disappointing movie. And to preface this, I, I don't actually look forward to going out to a movie, and, and I actually never do this. I never go to a movie being like, man, I can't wait to be disappointed. Man, I can't wait to hate this movie. Because movies take a lot of time to work through. It's a, it's a huge project. But the most disappointing Scratch that. This is the worst movie of 2021 because I was really looking forward to this because I love the first movie. And that is The Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard. I genuinely, I did not think this was going to be my number one movie. Worst movie of the year. But I went to see a free advanced screening of this with my friend. This was for free. I did not pay for this. And I'm very glad that I didn't pay for it because I've never watched it again. I will always keep the first movie to my heart. I love that movie. I love you, Ryan Reynolds. But, and Samuel Jackson, Salma Hayek, I love you guys. This movie was not popping. This movie was dumb. It, it, it didn't feel like, yes, there are dumb moments in the first movie, but this one took that, kind of like Venom, my issue with that, took the good, but then cranked it by a billion, but it felt more like a Three Stooges movie rather than The Hitman's Bodyguard. Because I, I get it, it's a funny, tacky title, but they really went for the cheese. And it's not the good kind of cheese. It's the kind that sticks with you for a long time in your body, takes a while to digest and just get out of your system. And you just want to forget about it. You want to move on. You never want to try that cheese again. That that was my experience with this film. I, I, I never wanted to try that film ever again. I love the first one. I will stick with that stuff, that good Gouda. This stuff, no. No. Wasn't funny. Acting was pretty terrible, besides Ryan Reynolds and Samuel Jackson and Selma Hayek. But other than that, the plot was horrendous. The only good part of the film was when Ryan Reynolds called Morgan Freeman Papa. That was the best part of the whole film. But yeah, I hate that movie with a fiery passion. <sighs> 
Well, guys, we did it. That is my top 10 most disappointing films of 2021. Thank you so much for sticking around. And please, don't forget to like and subscribe. And also, please don't forget to be blessed.